Hello, dear friends. We are celebrating the 30th anniversary of Stand to Reason. And to celebrate, we're going to spend some time with some very special people, some friends and colleagues of Stand to Reason. Without further ado, we're going to bring on... By the way, who are you? I am Tim Barnett. <laughs> oh, okay, just checking. <laughs> they, they know who I am. They want to know who you are. <laughs> I'm Tim Barnett, and we're spending some time with some with some friends and colleagues of Stand to Reason. And uh, first up, we have Frank Beckwith. Hi, Frank. How you doing? I'm doing great. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. Awesome. And uh, and we threw some questions out there um, for some of our friends to to answer, and we thought it might be fun to share maybe a, a, some stories. So, Frank, do you have any stories? <laughs> of uh greg or stand to reason that you want to share with us be careful frank yeah, be careful. <laughs> yeah. I, I have stories too I, okay? yeah well, well i mean you and i have gone back uh, even before stand to reason i can't remember the first time we met that's Do you i i remember it was 1992 i was speaking for in those days it was simon greenleaf university craig oh, yeah. hazen had mm. invited they used to have I think uh, every four or five every months or so, they'd have several weeks in a row of somebody coming in and giving a lecture on some right, apologetic right. issue. And so in those days, I was teaching at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, yeah, drove UNLV. in, and you were in the audience, and you had approached oh. me. Uh, Melinda was there, and you yeah. were telling us, my wife and I, Frankie, about uh, the standard reason and huh. you know, the, you, you know, your sort of vision of what you wanted to do. And by the way, congratulations uh, for 30 well, years. Thank you. You must have been 12 when you started. <laughs> <laughs> so the story, I cut yeah. you off there. Yeah, so I, so I don't know if you remember, Greg, in, in the right around 1993, my book, Politically Correct Death, came out, which was the, mm -hmm. one of several books that I would eventually publish on the sanctity of life and issues right. concerning abortion. It. And uh the late Gretchen Passantino invited, uh, she had this idea that we can do a kind of mock debate on the issue of abortion. And she would represent the pro-choice side and I would represent the pro-life side. And I, one of the things that I did in my opening comments and throughout the debate was to kind of uh, knock down some of the popular arguments for abortion rights, the ones that mm -hmm. appeal to sentiment and pity that sort of avoid the whole question of whether the unborn is a is truly a human person. And so afterwards, after you know, after the debate's done and after I've gone through all these arguments and cashing them out, you come up to me and you say, uh, I think I can succinctly put everything you said into this one conditional and it was <laughs> you said if the unborn is not a human person no justification for abortion is necessary and if the unborn is a human person no justification is adequate and i thought yeah. they're like 40 pages <laughs> like in one little <laughs> quip and i wow. thought and i thought that was really you know that showed me something about your talent and mm. you know that you you know you could sort of distill what I was trying to say, I was trying to say mm -hmm. that, look, you guys, if you don't believe that the unborn is a person, then make that argument. But everything else is just a distraction. It's mm -hmm. it's too. Mm -hmm. And you were able to, you know, just say it in a very pithy uh, way. And mm -hmm. I, I I thought, you know, I I, I thought I remember leaving there, tell, turning to my wife and saying, well, I guess those <laughs> I, I wasted those 40 pages. <laughs> you know. <laughs> well, you have that ability too, Frank, and I've uh, traded on that frequently. In fact, just recently I was talking about uh, the nature of truth, and, and, and I have this line in there when people say, what is truth? Well, my friend Frank Beckwith, when he was asked that question, he says, do you want the true answer or the false answer? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that gets right to the point. So. Yeah. And don't you yeah. have an, a line about eating an ashtray? Isn't oh, yeah. Oh. I don't know if you remember that, Frank. <laughs> It has to do with same-sex marriage, and uh, the idea was, um, well, the the aphorism was just because you can eat an ashtray doesn't me make it food. That, that's and, that's uh, right. the point. Yeah, yeah. You remember that? Yeah. And the point was just because you walk down the aisle and say I do doesn't mean it's a marriage. Hmm. That's right. Yeah. The the point of that. In fact, I remember it's, it's actually in our book, uh, uh, Relativism, and there's, a, I it was a way to succinctly explain 
a kind of teleological view of the nature of of human difference concerning sex. But if I said it that way, you know, if people would just get, you know, they that was just philosophy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. well, they wouldn't remember it. I, it's, I, the ashtray thing is easy. Even Tim remembered yeah. it. You know, so uh, some yeah, of the so youngsters may not know to... may not know what an ashtray is. Yeah, right? that's, 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 that's true. That's right. <laughs> Might have to adapt that one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, is there um so it seems like, you know, one of the things that that makes Sandy Reason unique is Greg's ability to distill something down to like kind of the nuts and bolts and make it memorable. Um is there anything else that you would that uh, that comes that comes to mind uh, that makes Stand to Reason unique? Yeah, you know, I I I think in terms of the way in which you guys have not been corporatized. I, I, what I mean by that is that there's still a kind of mom and pop feel about it, which I think in this day and age where uh, everything is, gets reduced to analytics and data, not that I'm against analytics and, and data collection, and I, obviously they're important, but I do think that the, the, the personal touch mm -hmm. is present there. And, I, and I, I, I listen to Greg every once in a while. I on, we get uh, the, the broadcast on Sundays here in Waco, Texas at roughly 4 p.m. And if I'm out and about, I'll turn on the radio. And one of the things that I, I really like the, way, uh, like the way in which Greg responds, but I also see that in, in, in other folks in the ministry as well, is a, a real uh, carefulness in the way in which mm. the uh, person that is challenging you uh, is approached. And I think that's that's something you don't always see, especially today. I mean, the rancor that dominates our political mm -hmm. life, uh, you know, it can be kind of oppressive and constraining. And so I do think that there is a hunger out there for, you know, for hearing, uh, you know, especially from a more traditional perspective, voices that aren't, you know, angry. <laughs> And I think that's an important thing. Yeah, yeah. I remember uh, when I was uh, broadcasting KBRT for a number of years, and you were living in Southern California, and uh, a lot of times you'd just show up. <laughs> and so we'd open the door and have you come in. You'd sit there in the studio, and we'd do the whole show together. You know, where yeah. you were riding shotgun with me. It was a lot of fun. We never knew what was going to happen. Of course, people would call in, and you and I would interact, and sometimes you had uh, additional things to add to what I say. Sometimes it was a question that you were best suited to respond to. Yeah. Those were uh, those were fun, kind of fast mm. and loose uh, shows. I think people really enjoyed them. And, of course, you have such a great sense of humor, Frank, and always coming up with these little quips. I have more of them by, uh, like, um, it, you're almost like a Yogi Berra kind of guy. Uh, I used to believe in reincarnation, but that was in a former yeah, life. Yeah. I mean, that's you, too. Or, you know, or, or, that's actually my... It's your fault I blame other people. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> so so I, 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 I had said that so many times. My sister-in-law, about 10 years ago for Christmas, bought me a T-shirt that actually has that on there with... Oh, my, there, my right? name at the bottom. So yeah, it's now. Yeah. It's... Well, your sister is actually a comedian. I don't know if she still is, but she used to be a stage comedian, right? So it must must run in the family. Well, our father was very, very funny. Uh, yeah. And uh -huh. yeah, so uh, li my sister Elizabeth is a writer for the TV show The Goldbergs. Uh, so uh -huh. she's still oh, no she's way. still very active. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Very well, good. this uh, I just want you to know, Frank, that the relationship we've had over the years has been. Uh, so valuable to me. It's just been fun, just full-on fun. And of course, the last 10 years, we haven't spent as much time together as we have earlier before that. The first couple, 20, two decades of Stand to Reason, uh, our lives have taken us in a little bit different directions. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's always fun, and you have really contributed to my own growth as a thoughtful Christian, and uh, uh, I've already, always appreciated uh you in that regard and frankie too I, I actually talk to her more often because she she schedules all my flights still yeah so i, I actually know where greg is in, <laughs> you know I, I feel like i'm like part of the cia or something you know that's right you're <laughs> looking over my shoulder wow right yeah where's right. greg coco wow. just text me i'll tell you yeah <laughs> are we are we gonna see you in november at eps i i i am going to be on a panel um Scott Smith, who's a uh, professor at Biola, Biola he, he has right. a new book that came out on critical theory, and oh, wow. he invited me to be on a panel to discuss the book. So I, I plan on, on, on being there. 
for for that. And plus, you're doing a new. You're. I think you just texted me that you have a new work in process on on the pro life issue. Yes. So my abortion. my 2007 book, Defending Life, which was published ah. by Cambridge University Press. Uh, I proposed last late last year a, revi a revised edition in light of the Dobbs case. And then there have mm. just been so many other new types of arguments, especially concerning things like conscience protection for pro-life physicians, things that I don't mm -hmm. wrestle with it, that I have not dealt with in the book. And so mm -hmm. just about six weeks ago, I got a contract and I'm supposed to get the manuscript to them by July of next year. And, mm -hmm. and my unit, I was also able to secure an external fellowship. So I got a course reduction this semester so I can work on the book. <laughs> so that was nice. nice. Huh. Yeah. And you're at Baylor now, been at Baylor for a long time. Just want to give a that, hat, hat, hat tip to that. That's you know? right. I and just, that's where my daughter wants to go, by oh. the way, which I, I'm sure I can't afford it, but I'm just saying. So that's, she's even got a Baylor sweatshirt. Oh, she's boy. a junior in high school. She got a Baylor sweatshirt. Yes. It's my 20 years and I just, be, just beginning uh, my 21st. Congratulations. Congratulations! Thank you. Well, we we appreciate appreciate you spending this time with us. We got a we got a run, but thank you for uh, sharing those stories. I want to hear some of those ones that we couldn't <laughs> share on the air a little bit later. <laughs> now, it's good seeing your lovely yeah. face there. Uh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Look forward to seeing it this fall.